Okay, good morning everyone. Good morning. We are on Daf um, Kuf Yud Omed Aleph. We're learning about snakes and we're going to learn a little bit more about snakes today, but yesterday we were learning about a fellow who got bitten by a snake and was not Zoycha to be saved from the snake bite and the Gemot Chazal concluded, bless you, that it was because he had been Poretz Geder. Uh, he had violated one of the um, um, carefully legislated rules instituted by the Chachamim for the community and as a result he suffered the punishment for it. So the Gemara now says or like, uh, I don't know, 15, 13 lines from the top. Haiman de Karche Chivya. Well, if a person finds himself in the uncomfortable position of being wrapped around by a snake, what should he do? How do you escape a <coughs> constricting snake around you? So, Linchos Lamaya, you should go into a body of water. I guess maybe people can carry him there if he's stuck. The of the Kula Aresha, Ulahad Kemine, take a basket, put it over your head, so that as the snake continues to slither its body around you and work its way up towards your head, it'll instead wrap itself around the basket. Rashi explains that you can't grab a snake by the body because that's only going to get him more upset. So <clears throat> what you have to do is just let him um, slither onto the basket that's over your head. And then and then once it's on the basket and off of your body, throw it quickly into the water and get and hightail it out of there, right? And uh, and then you'll be okay. If a person is is knows that a snake is upset with him and is pursuing him, snakes are attributed by Chazal as having a superior kind of intelligence. Whether it's instinctive or not, I don't know. But the point is, is that once a snake gets your scent, uh, he's, going, he's going after you. He's going after you with a vengeance uh, <coughs> if he doesn't like you, right? So, if you want to shake off your scent, so if, you have, if you're traveling with a friend, put your friend on your soul, uh, put, have your friend put you on his shoulders and walk for Amos, and that way it'll break your trail. The Elo, Lishoar Nagra. Another, if you're not traveling with a friend, then what you should do is cross over a small brook of water, and that'll shake your scent. The Elo, Liaver Nahara. And if that doesn't work, or if you don't have that available to you, then you have to pass through a river in order to, 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 break, the, uh, to break the scent. Uvalelia, Losve Lapuria Arba Chavisa Venigni Bekochvi. At night, if you know that a snake is still after you, right, you're like the fugitive running away from the snake, so then you should take your bed and on the four bed legs, you should put four buckets of water um, and then sleep under the stars, Rashi explains, because snakes are very cunning and he may climb onto the ceiling and jump on you from there. So the only, if you're sleeping under the stars, the only way for him to get to you is by slithering up the bedpost. Now you've got the water there, so that's one deterrent. And then Velesi Dalit Shunri, Velisrinu Be'arba Akari Depuria. And then take four cats and tie them to your four bed legs. Velesi Shachvi, and then you should take rustling brush and put it all around you, put it all around you. And then place it all around so that when the cat, when the snake slithers in, he'll make a noise. The cats will hear him and they'll attack him and they'll eat him. Fine. All right. Haiman is like sort of like survivalist Gemara. Right. Haiman de Basre If a person is being actively pursued by a snake, or as you see the snake coming after you. See if you can run into sand, because snakes don't slither well in sand, and that'll slow them down. Hi itza, the chaz yechivya velovyada iyohiv daite iluya iloyohiv daite iluya. Now the Gemara also ascribes to snakes something that is ascribed to the original serpent by Chazal, and that is is that snakes have a sexual craving towards human women, and as a matter of fact, Chazal say 
that the reason why women menstruate is because the Nachash inserted himself sexually into Chava, and that is what caused her to menstruate in all women from that time to menstruate. And Chazal, and I, I don't know whether there's, I, I think that this is part of not just Jewish um, 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 li- literature, that you can find this, but I think this is found in a lot of medieval literature, the same concept. I haven't researched Alexander it. the Great's mother, right? Lipius? Oh, is that right? You say that he was a product, a product of that? Oh, is that, I didn't know yeah. that. Okay, that's very yeah. interesting. Okay, thank you. Yeah. In any event, um, uh, so you have to be careful. If a woman is being pursued by a snake, then she has to be wary that may not be there to kill her, but he may be there to, to have his way sexually with her. So therefore, tishlach mana v'nishtaye kame. So she should take off an article of clothing and throw it in front of the snake. Imichrach v'hu daiti iluya v'ilo lo yivda v'ilo lo yoyiv daiti iluya. And <coughs> if the snake wraps itself around her clothing, then that's a sign that the snake is after her uh, in a desirous fashion. And if not, not. I guess. She should be insulted if he's not, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not good enough for the snake, right? So anyway, so Maita Kanta, Tishamesh Kame. So what's the remedy? In other words, if she finds that the snake has this amorousness for her, she should have relations with her husband in front of the snake, and that the way sh- uh, the snake will feel jilted and he'll say, ah, she's already got a guy, she doesn't need me. So Ikada Amrikol she came to talk if lay Yitzray. So others learn say, no, that's the worst thing to do because then the snake will only feel a greater desire for her if he sees her <coughs> involved in a sexual act. So, Ela tishkol mimazia umitufra betishti bevetema dishtana ana. But rather what she should do is she should take, cut some of her hair and her fingernails off, throw them at the snake, and say the following incantation, she should say, I'm a nida. Now, it's not like Rashi says, it's not that we're expecting the snake to understand and say, oh, if that's the case, then uh, I'll find someone else. The snakes don't understand, at least according to Rashi, but rather it's incantational in nature. There's a supernatural effect that this will have on the snake to shake him off her trail. <coughs> so, hi, it's a, the Ayel Bachivya, if a woman is being pursued by a snake, lifts a, uh, I'm sorry, not that she's been, she's been penetrated by a snake. The snake has entered into her sexually. So what is the remedy? How do you get the snake out now? So the Gemara says, Lipsa velos vuha atarti chavisa. Well, first of all, she has to spread her legs in a preparation for the snake to come out. So what we do is we have her put her both two feet in two barrels. So that'll cause her legs to remain spread. Velese bistra shmeni vilishta agumre. Then what you do is you take fatty meat and put it over hot coals so that it will create a very uh, pungent <coughs> fragrance. And then velese agna de tachla, de tachli, rechamra richtana. And then what you do is, then you bring a sort of, a kind of white, uh, a, a cress in a basket, and, uh, and you bring a wine uh, that is very pungent. Velos vu hasam velitrukin hu bahari hadadi. And then you place the woman right there, uh, in, or you place the ingredients right there in front of her, and you mix them together. And velinkot siv tsivza biyada. And then she should take a tongs in her hand. Dechimerach reicha nafik v'asi. Because as soon as the snake smells all of these very pungent foods, it'll, um, you know, snakes, snakes are, are, we, are just as bad as men, right? In other words... Kiddish, right? <laughs> the, the one thing more powerful than the love of a woman is, you know, food, right? So therefore, the snake will the snake will come out, and then velishkale veliklaye benura, and then she'll be able to grab it with the tongs, and she should immediately thrust it in a fire, right? Because the ilo hadar iluya, because if not, he'll want to come back to her. Rabbi, okay. I'm sorry. Could we learn in the Mirror of my mother? Yes, absolutely. Her name? Frimsha Basraga Fivish. Frimsha Basraga Fivish. Neshama should have an aliyah. Amen. Okay. We now go and we continue along in the Mishnah. The Mishnah had said... That's a good question. Um, I don't think there's ever the same concern of a female snake running after a man. We don't find that. It's only a male snake running after a woman. So it's a valid question. The Mishnah had said that... Kol ha'ochlin, all foods are allowed to be eaten on Shabbos, even if you're eating them primarily for medicinal purposes, because it's a food item, it's not a medicine item. 
and therefore it doesn't fall under the rubric of uh, the Gzair of Shechika Samamanim that Chazal made. So, and the same thing was true by beverages. It's, it's got to be a, a normal beverage, it's got to be a normal food. So the Gemara says, Kol mai. Why did the Mishnah say all foods? What is that coming to include? The answer is, is that it's coming to include spleen. <coughs> so the Gemara had, in Brachos had said that cert, for certain parts of your body, the spleen, eating the spleen is healthy. For other parts of your body, it's unhealthy because spleen is healthy for your teeth, but it's unhealthy for your kishkas. And karshinin, which is a certain kind of vegetation, which I think someone told me this morning in art school is called vetch, right? Right? So I don't know what that is, uh, honestly. It's some kind of vegetable. So, um, or some kind of, some kind of yeah. leeks. 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 Okay. Anyway, okay, thank you for that. Is that the, who's that, Steinsaltz? Go on. Okay. Is our snake finished? Is it switch topics? Yeah, we're done with snakes. If you want more about snakes, uh, we'll talk later. All right. And, um, and uh, so, E, and the Gemara says that uh, this karshinin is just the opposite. It's bad for your teeth, but it's good for your intestines. So even though a, one could have argued that since these foods are unhealthy for certain parts of your body, then it's clearly indicated that it, you're you taking it for medicinal use. Nevertheless, since sometimes people eat it stam as a food, then it's permitted to eat it on Shabbos. Kol amashkin la'asuye mai. And when you said all beverages are permitted, what were you coming to include? La'asuye mate slofin b'chaymetz. You, people would typically, they would pickle um, caper flowers in uh, vinegar or brine and uh, you, you could drink that brine because even though it's not so common to drink it, but some people, it's like drinking pickle juice. <coughs> some people will drink it, so therefore it's okay. So Amalei Ravina Larava, Mahu Lishtos Me Raglaim So he asked him, is a person allowed to drink urine on Shabbos because urine was known for its medicinal uh, uh, um, uh, powers. So Amr Lay, Tanina Kol HaMashkin Shosam, Eraglayim Lo Shosam Inchi. So he said to him, no, that's not okay, because only normal beverages are permitted, and the urine is not a beverage. Um, you know, you, the only time you drink urine, I hope, is for medicinal purposes. Okay, Chutz Mi Meid Dekolim, except, says the Mishnah, the thing that you're not, the food that you're not, and the beverage that you're not allowed to drink is palm tree water. Now, what is palm tree water? What is it used for? So the Gemara says, Tana Chutzmi made the Karim. We have a Brisa that says not made the Kalim, but rather made the Karim with a Reish. So Man de Tana made the Karim, Shehim Dokrim Es Hamara. If you learn that it's a reference, if you learn it with a Reish, the reason it's called the Karim is because the word Doker is to stab or to incisively, you know, uh, be able to get through. So it's, it's Doker Es Hamara. It sort of stabs the bile. Um, or stabs the gallbladder, um, meaning that it's, uh, as we'll see, it has a very strong laxative effect. Umanda Omar, the Kalim, Shiyotsin Mishne, the And if you learn that it's the Kalim with a Lamed, it's because this water can be found in a certain place that rests between two palm trees. And the Gemara explains, Omar Rabba, Barbruna, Tarti, Toloi, Ikabimai Rava, there are two, no, I guess, famous palm trees <coughs> somewhere in Eretz Yisrael. Venafka, Ena, Demaya, Bibenayu. And there's a spring, or uh, some kind of oasis, that flows between these two trees. And that's where we harvest this may de karim or may de kolim. So kasa kama mirafi, if you drink one cup of it, it'll loosen your stool. It's a laxative. Idach mishal shel, you drink two cups, you get diarrhea. And the idach ki hechi da'ili hachi nafki. You drink three cups, then whatever comes in, it'll come out just as clear the other end. Which could be very potentially dangerous. I mean, diarrhea is a, is a killer in third world countries because it, it dehydrates. Amar Ula lididi shasi shikhra de bavloi umali minayu. So Ula says, eh, what do you need made the column for? I drink Babylonian beer and that's just as powerful of a laxative for me as all this stuff that you've been describing. But that's only provided that you haven't had Babylonian beer in 40 days. But if you drink it regularly, then it loses its laxative effect. Rav Yosef Omar, Zesom Hamitsri, so Rav Yosef now describes another kind of curative beverage called Zisom HaMitzri, which was discussed in Maseches Brachos, and, and the recipe is as follows. Tilsa Sari, Vitilsa Kortimi, Vitilsa Milcha. You put in one-third barley flour, one-third saffron, and one-third salt. 
I guess you mix it in some kind of, some kind of solution and you drink it that way. Rav Papa Amar Tilsa Chiti Vitilsa Kortimi Vitilsa Milcha. He says, no, the, re- the correct recipe is one third wheat flour, not barley flour, one third saffron and one third salt. And the way to remember who says what is that Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef whose name is with the Samech, is the one who includes Sa'ari, which is an, another S Samech sound, Sari, not Chiti. And therefore, Sisani is the cup that you drink it in. So if you want to remember that Rav Yosef is the one who says sorry, just think about the cup that you drink the Zisom HaMitzri in. The Shasi Luhu Bein Dab And people typically drink this beverage between uh, Pesach and, and Shavuos. And the Kamit Marfile U the Rafi Kamit For people who are uh, constipated, it acts as a laxative. And for people who uh, have the runs, it uh, it acts as a what's the opposite of a binder, binder. A binder. Thank you. Right. You know what else is a binder? Cl- clean peaches. It's an old line from the two thousand year old man. Okay. The kos ikrin. Um, the kos ikrin. So the Gemara had said another thing. The Mishnah said that another thing that you're uh, that you're not allowed to drink on Shabbos is kos ikrin. We had said that the word ikrin many times in Chazal means a sterilizing potion. Rashi doesn't translate it that way in the Mishnah. Rashi translates it as an herbal elixir that has roots, herbal roots in it, from the word ikar, which means a root. The word ikar, ikrin calls mean oker, that it uproots, it uproots a person's ability to, to reproduce. Umar will explain what this means shortly. Mykos ikrin, what is it? So Amar Rabbi Yechanan, Lacey Miskel Zuzakuma Alexandria. What you do is you bring one zoo's weight worth of, um, of a sap that grows in Alexandria, the miskal zoo's a gabyagila, then you bring another zoo's weight worth of a certain kind of oriental saffron, well, miskal zoo's, I'm sorry, a guba galia, excuse me, is alum, it's a different kind of uh, herb, uh, well, miskal zoo's a kurkama rishka, then you bring another uh, equal weight of this oriental <coughs> saffron, and you mix them all up, you grind them all up and mix them all together. That if a woman is a zava, she's having abnormal menses and she wants to get it to stop, the flow to stop, she should mix all three ingredients together, together with wine, and this will have the curative effect on her, and it will not have the side effect of sterilizing her. However, the arcona, but if a person is suffering from jaundice, which the Gemara, expo- we'll, we'll see later on, is associated with some kind of fever, um, and it turns his skin yellow or green, so you should take two out of those three aforementioned ingredients, mix it b'shichra, mix it with a beer, umi akir. It'll cure you, but it'll also sterilize you. Now, let's explain more carefully. For a woman who's got abnormal menses, she should mix all three ingredients in wine, and it will not sterilize. <coughs> the elo, but then the Gemara says, if it doesn't work, you see, the elo could mean one of two things. Elo means either it doesn't work, or it could mean if you don't have it available. Those are, that's, uh, that could mean, it could mean one, one of those two things. But if, it's, if, if not that, so then, lacy tlosa kapizi shamchi parsoi, then you should get three uh, containers, each container holding three loaves of shamchi parsoi of Persian onions, v'nishlog b'chamra, boil them in wine, v'nishkaye, and then give that person to drink, v'neimale kumi zovayich, and say to her, arise from your menses. V'ilo, losva parshas drachim, v'lin kitakasa d'chamra biyada, and if not that, then place her on a crossroads, put a cup of wine in her hand, the lacy inish me achura person should come up from behind her veliva asa and frighten her, scare her. The lemala kumizovaych and say to her, arise from your menses. The lo lacy buna de kmona, ubuna de marika, ubuna de shav de shavlilta. And if not that, then you should take a fistful of cumin, a fistful of of uh, saffron, a fistful of fenugreek. Vinishlok Bechamra, boil that in wine. Vinashkiya, 
and give her to drink. The name Allah, kumi zavayachin say, arise from your menses. Vilo lesi shitin shi'i didana. And if not that, then you should take th- uh, 60 seals, the things, the sealant, I guess maybe it's the wax or the, um, clay or the, or the clay seals, and what you do is you soak them and they become soft, the lishfaye, and then you should rub her with those seals, the lemala kumi zavayach, and say to her, uh, while you're doing that, arise from your menses, the low, lese pashtina the lishlok the chamra, the lishfaye, the lemala kumi zavayach. Then the alternative to that, is what you do is you get a pashtina, which Rashi says is a low growing grass, boil it in wine, rub it on her, and say the same thing. Vi'ilo, and if not that, then lesi charnuga dehigsa rumisa, then you should take some grass uh, that, or some, uh, some brush that grows from a certain kind of bush, the likli, burn it, the lispa bishacha ki dekisna, and then place the ash from that burnt brush in um, in linen rags, bekaita uh, if it's summertime, and of the da amar gufna besisla, or if it's wintertime, put it in a cotton rag, and then I guess it doesn't really say what to do with it, but the presumption is, is that you place it upon her, tie it around her, whatever it is, vilo, and if not that, lichri sheva biri v'liklu v'hu, that if what you should do is you should take, uh, you should dig seven holes in the ground, the likli v'hu. And then, which, and, and um, the likli bahu shabeshta, yalda de orla, and then you should place or burn into those seven holes um, uh, seven branches of new, newly growing within the first three years, so they're orla of vines. And the linkita kasa de chamar biyada, and she should hold, while she sits on each hole, she should hold a cup of wine in her hands. And she should sit briefly on each hole that has the branch in it, arise, move over to the next hole, and so forth. And, uh, and for each hole that she sits on, you say once again, arise from your, from your being a zava. And if, that, and if not that, so then take um, a white flour, uh, smear it all over her lower body, from the, the bottom of her body downwards, from the midpoint of her body downwards. The lemala kumi zavachin say the same thing to her. The ilo lese beyasa de in the amisa. If not that, then take an ostrich egg, the likli, and burn it. The lispa vishachaki de kisna bekaito vishachi idomer gufna besisva, and wrap it in linen rags uh, for the summer or cotton rags for the winter. The ilo, and if that doesn't work then lift achla chavisa de chamra lishma, then open up a new barrel of wine for, for just for her. In other words, opening up a new barrel is not easily done. It's very expensive. So I guess you try all of the other crazy things first. And say, hey, wait a minute. Did we open up a new barrel? Get her, get her drunk. Uh, no, 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 no. This is not, it's not to get her drunk. That's not the objective. The objective is, is there's some kind of supernatural effect that if you open up a new barrel, but you're right. Mendel happens to be right. Rashi says, "Yain harbe tishta tamid." She should drink a large amount, quantity of wine, and maybe that'll help. It. That'll dislodge the menses from her. The lo linkit sha'arta de mishtakhas bekfusa de kudna chivra. Another option is that she should take the barley kernels that she can that she can find in the dung of a white mule. If she holds it in her hand for one day, then the menses will uh, stop for two days. If she holds it in her hand for two days, uh, it'll, the menses will stop for three days straight. If she holds it in her hands for three days, it'll cure her permanently. You know what happens if she holds it for four days? Her husband will divorce her. Right. Anyway, um, anyway, let it, let us go on. So the uh, the Gemara now says, Liarkona train b'shichra umiyakia. So the the we had said before that if a person has this kind of feverish jaundice, then he should take two of the aforementioned the ingredients for this elixir, and um, and you mix it with beer. And it'll cure you, but it'll also sterilize you. So the Gemara says, <coughs> "Ve'ilo," and if not that, "Laisi reisha dishibuta de milcha v'lishlok You have another option. You can take the head of a fish 
known as the shibuta fish. I once tasted a shibuta fish. The Gemara says elsewhere that I think we're going to see it in Shabbos that Hakadosh Baruch Hu creates a permitted food for every food that's usher. And for pork, you have the shibuta fish, which tastes just like pork. So I tasted the shibuta fish, which can only be found in a river in Turkey. Um, the two Ari's, Ari um, so, so, um, Zivitovsky and Ari, um, the two, uh, the two uh, scientists from Israel who go around the world searching for these kinds of exotic things. For the OU, we had a thing in, the, uh, in L.A. a couple of years ago, and they caught it. They got a shibuta fish from Turkey. They brought it to us and were able to taste it. So you're going to ask me, well, did it taste like pork? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It tasted like a, it tasted like something, but I don't know what it tasted like. Anyway, so you're supposed to take a salted head of a shibuta fish, boil it in uh, beer, and drink that. Vilo lese munini de kamsi. And if that, if if not that, then take the juice or the brine from uh, grasshoppers. I, I don't know. I don't know how uh, these were remedies that were known to Chazal. It's unclear from the Gemara itself whether Chazal knew this from some kind of religious tradition or whether these were things that were known within general society and they were giving this, passing it down to their Talmudim. The third possibility is, is that there's a deeper Kabbalistic meaning to all of these lines that we're reading, which are well over our head. So we have to remain a little bit agnostic about what the purpose of these Gemaras are, and we just, we just go through them with the emuna, with the faith, that Chazal had a purpose. It may not be apparent to us, but there was a purpose to it. Okay. Vileka monini de kamsi. And if you can't find this brine from grasshoppers, lacy munini dinakiri, then bring the brine from certain kind of small bird, vile aile lebe bani, and then bring the patient to a bathhouse, the lishfaye, and rub this uh, and rub him down. The reason for rubbing him down is because you bring him to a bathhouse because it's hot. You rub him down to again to heat up his his skin. And that's supposed to get the fever out of him. And if you can't get him to a bathhouse, then get him to an, another warm place, the place between the oven and the wall of a house. Another way of warming up a patient like this is to wrap him up in your cloak. And Rav Acha Bar Yosef and Rashi says, a cloak, either your own cloak or uh, with a cloak of a former patient who had this illness that will also be therapeutic in getting rid of the disease. Rav Acha Bar Yosef Chashbe Ovid Le Rav Kahana Ve'itzi and Rav Yosef got sick with, the, Rav Acha rather got sick with this uh, Yarkona and, uh, and Rav Kahana wrapped him in, in a cloak like that and he was cured. Ve'ilo and if not that then Lacey Tlosa Kathizi Tamori Parsiya so then bring three of these measured cups of Persian uh, dates Utlasa kapisi de kira de and then another three containers of uh, honeycomb wax, or like beeswax. Utlasa kapisi ahala tolana, and then another three measuring cups of um, ahala tolana, which is a certain kind of red what, uh, alum, right? And velish lukinu b'shichra, boil them in beer, velishti, and, and drink it. The ilo, and if not that, then lacy ilo barchamer v'liglach mitziasa deresha. Then what you do is you should bring a um, a baby mule or a baby donkey, I should say, and then take the patient and shave the middle of his head. The lishpuk le dama me apute. Then take the blood from the baby um, a, a donkey, draw blood from the baby donkey's forehead, the losli areshe, and then place that blood on the head of the patient. But be careful not to get any of the blood in the patient's eyes, because that could blind him. And if not that, uh, that what you should do is you should get the head of a um, of a ram that has been assaulting in uh, in uh, in uh, in some kind of uh, being preserved in some kind of uh, brine. Or vinegar, velishlok the shechra, boil it in beer, velishti, and drink that. Ve'ilo, and if not that, lacy dover acher, 
chutrana, then take a pig that is spotted, velikare, kill it, and then tear open it and, and get out its guts, velospe aliba, and alibe, and place it upon the patient, I guess on his heart. The ilo lese karti mikavtuta, and if not that, so then bring leak from kavtuta de mishri, like Rashi explains from the middle row of the field because it's more pungent and um, flavorful, and uh, and give that to eat to the patient, and see if that will heal him. Hahu taya de There was once a peddler who was uh, sick with this jaundice. And he said to a certain farmer, he said, listen, as payment, take my cloak and give me from the middle row of some leek to eat. So he, he, the farmer said, fine, and he gave him the leek. So he said, do me a favor, I just gave you my cloak, it's yours now, can I borrow it for a second, because part of the therapy is to wrap yourself to warm your body. So can I borrow it for a second? I want to sleep with it for just a little while. So so Kali Ichrach Ganabe. So what he did is he took the cloak, he singed it a little bit, I guess to get it warm, to start it to get become warm. He slept in it, Karichamim Vikam Nafal Porta Porta Mine. And it heated up and his fever uh, seeped out in his perspiration into the entire garment and I guess it was such a powerful kind of disease that the garment disintegrated uh, as the fever, as the feverish um, fluids in his body seeped out into the garment. So this guy was a, a dishonest peddler because I guess if he knew that was going to happen, he shouldn't have sold, he shouldn't have bartered it for uh, for the leak. Okay, liarkuna train b'shichra umiyakar. So so let's go back to that idea. If you want to be cured of this uh, feverish um, jaundice then you should take this elixir in beer and it'll cause sterility. So the Gemara says, Umi shari, but since when is it permitted to drink something which will sterilize you? Don't we have a b'risa that says, how do you know that it's forbidden to sterilize a human being? You know, the Torah only says that you're not allowed to sterilize your animals, but from the words of Lasasu, that you may not do this in your own lands, we learn that it applies to human beings as well. So you can't sterilize a human being. So what right would you have to drink this elixir? So the Gemara says, Honey, mili heicha de kamichave, hacha me atzmahu. But he says, But that's only forbidden to sterilize if that's your primary intent. But here it's happening as a side effect, and therefore it's okay. The Amar Rabbi Yochanan Harotsu Shi Yasaris Tarnagol Yitel Karbalto Umistaris Me'ela. As Rabbi Yochanan said, that if you want to sterilize your rooster, he says it's not really so much that it's a side effect, but it's not happening as a direct cause of actually removing the sexual, uh, the sexual organs. Uh, and the same thing is that if you have a rooster and you want to sterilize it, but the Torah says you're not allowed to sterilize a rooster, so what you can do is you can just remove the comb that's on his head, and that causes him to become impotent. So that's a form of sterilization which is not prohibited by the Torah. So the Gemara says, but wait a minute, but still that's not comparable to our case because the Ha'amar of Ashi, Ramos Ruchahu Dinakitole, you've taken away his virility. In other words, his, his, his machismo. Uh, when you take a rooster's comb, it's, it's, it, it, you haven't sterilized him. He still is virile as ever. He's still, he's still potent. It's just that he's been demoralized because he no longer has it. Like a guy with a big pompadour haircut, and you shave off his hair, he loses his, 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 his swagger. His right? mojo. His mojo. Right? That's what it is. So it's not, so this, but this is worse. This is a chemical that's causing sterility. So the Gemara says, Ella Bissaris. So the Gemara says you have to conclude that the only time it's permitted to drink this is if the person already is sterile. So the Gemara says, that everyone agrees that there are certain things that even if there's already a pre-existing condition, you're not allowed to contribute to that pre-existing condition. One example is machametz achar machametz. The Torah says that when you offer a korban mincha, a flower offering on the altar, it cannot be chametz. 
But let's say you go ahead and take leavened flour and you leaven it even further. So that's also a violation. The Torah says in two different places, two different verbs. Don't bake the mincha chametz and don't do the mincha as chametz. So the don't do is more generic. Why don't you just use that pasuk? So what does that teach you? This teaches me that if, even if a person who's already kneaded the dough has made it into leavened dough, if I go ahead and bake it and bring it as a mincha, so then I'm chayiv as well. I'm sorry. And how do you know that a person who introduces new sterilization to a person who's already sterile, how do you know that that's also asr? The Torah describes different kinds of injuries that render an animal sterile and therefore cannot be brought as a carbon. So, ma'uch is crushed, is crushed cu- uh, squeezed, kasus is crushed, nasuk is dislodged, and karus is severed. Now, nasuk means completely removed, where the testes are completely removed, and kas- karus means that the testes are still there, but the van's severance, I think it's called, which is the, the artery that brings the semen um, uh, into to, to, to the flow to the genitalia, is severed. That's a form of sterilization, even though the testes are still there. So the Gemara asks the question, So I don't understand, says the Gemara. If you're already doing an act of sterilization when the testes are still there, then surely by removing the testes, it's also sterilization. So what do we learn from there? This teaches me that even if you remove the testes after they've already been rendered uh, inactive, so then you're still doing an iser and you're chayev. So the Gemara says, you see that even if a person's a saris, you're not allowed to give him a chemical that will sterilize him further. So the Gemara answer is ve'ela bezake. So we must be talking about an elderly man who's now impotent, and therefore it's permitted. So the Gemara says, but wait a minute. V'hamar on hein hein hechazirulun I just took a medicine that brought me brought back my virility, even though I'm an old man. They had Viagra back then also. In other words, he said, I, there is something that you can take, even as an old man, to restore your virility. So how can you tell me that an old man is allowed to take something that will sterilize him? So the Gemara says, Ela isha. So it must be talking about a woman. In other words, only a woman would ever be allowed to drink this, because a woman is, is allowed to sterilize herself. She doesn't have the commandment of pru or vu. We won't go into the halacha now because it's late, but just realize that there are methods of birth control that are permitted, and there are methods of birth control that are usr, some of them even being an isr, the orisa, like getting your tubes tied. So now the Gemara says, at least according to some poskim, so now the Gemara says, Ula Rabbi Yechanan ben Baruka da Amar al Shneim hu Omer, by Yivarach Hosam Elokim, by Yermelin Pruer, hu Ma'ikolam Emar. But if you don't like Rabbi Yochanan Beruka, then both of, that both a man and a woman have the mitzvah of pruer who equally. So then, how could a woman ever take something that's going to sterilize her? Answers the Gemara Bizikena, because there, if a woman is postmenopausal, there for sure there's no hope of her regaining her uh, virility. Inami Bakar, or for a woman who's known to be sterile, let's say she has no uterus, there she's also allowed to drink it because there's no hope for her. Have a wonderful day, everyone.